thing that comes to your mind when you think dirty laundry? Is it the piles of clothes you have yet to throw in the washing machine that you've been putting off for forever? Is it someone's naughty secrets being aired out for all to see, much to their embarrassment and shame? Or is it perhaps Voltron? For me, it's Voltron. You may be thinking, what does dirty laundry have to do with a giant fighting lion robot in space? And that's what I'm here to explain. Today, we'll be digging into the Voltron fanfic Dirty Laundry. Its status is an iconic phenomenon in the Voltron fandom that was both beloved and caused quite a stir before it was eventually deleted and replaced by the entirety of like the jazz. B movie script. More on that later. And speaking of dirty laundry or dirty anything really, dirty hair. Nobody likes dirty hair in this house or plastic waste for that matter. I want to smell like I spent the last six hours in a super fancy luxury spa with amenities like aromatherapy and hot towels and fuzzy slippers. Which is why, before we dive in, I want to thank Kitsch for sponsoring this video. Kitsch is a female-founded brand that makes high-quality, elevated accessories and wellness products to help you care for your hair morning, noon, and night. Whether you're looking for more shine and softness, or just want healthier hair, period, less prone to breakage, Kitsch can help you with your hair needs and help improve it over time. They offer bottle-free shampoo and conditioner bars that let you cut down on plastic use and are cruelty-free, vegan, and made using salon-quality ingredients to nourish all hair types from root to tip. One bar is the equivalent of roughly 100 washes. So in addition to saving you hair product, you're also saving money. In addition to all this, they smell incredible. The bars are infused with essential oils, which makes both your hair and your entire bathroom smell amazing. Like I was not prepared for just how nice these things smell. I use the rice water shampoo and conditioner bundle made for preventing split ends and promoting hair growth. I genuinely feel like I'm in a spa whenever I take a shower now. They're super easy to use and apply especially with these cute little bar bags, makes sudsing up even easier. Kitsch also offers satin pillowcases designed to prevent agitating your hair while you sleep. Plus, they're really cute, and I mean, who doesn't want a nice, cool pillow to fall asleep on, especially with summer ramping up? If you're interested in trying out Kitsch's products for yourself, use my link in the description and my code Coley to get 25% off your first order. They ship to the US and internationally to over 27 countries. I'm very happy with how my hair has been looking since trying out Kitsch for the past few months. It's soft, it smells great, it's silky, so if you're down to try any of Kitsch's goodies, then give it a shot. There are a lot of goodies to choose from. Thank you so much for the support, Kitsch. Let's get into the video. Okay, so a very brief background on Voltron Legendary Defender and its characters for those unfamiliar with the show. Lucky bastards. It takes place in a futuristic setting where paladins can combine together to form a giant robot known as Voltron and protect the universe against the forces of evil. There are six main characters, or paladins. Shiro, Keith, Lance, Hunk, Pidge, and Allura, who initially isn't a paladin but then becomes one for reasons later on. Very early on, Keith and Lance became a fan favorite couple in the fandom known as Clants. This was due to their interactions together in the first couple of seasons, their opposing personalities, their similar struggles with identity and living up to expectations both enacted upon themselves and by others, and of course the classic red and blue dynamic. Lance was put in a relationship with Allura in the... 7th, 8th season? And though the showrunners were well aware of clans and even heavily pushed them in marketing for the show, the two never became more than just a fan couple. No clans is canon king. That's a throwback. And to this day, the mess that was clans still haunts whatever remnants remain of the Voltron fandom. Got it? Okay, cool. So the fanfic Dirty Laundry was posted on the popular fanfiction site AO3 on July 11th, 2016. This was not long at all after the first season of Voltron Legendary Defender was released on Netflix, June 10th, 2016. You can take a peep at the summary right here. Now, I actually did read this fanfic back in the good old Voltron glory days, but it has been a hot second. The general gist of the story is that the Voltron gang are students in a modern college AU. Lance needs a guy to introduce to his large family, some of whom are not entirely accepting of his bisexuality and in exchange for dragging Keith into this, he'll do his laundry for two months. The two aren't necessarily besties, they're not particularly close, and they more so tolerate each other. Kind of like a rivals thing going on. Yeah, begrudging tolerance, but Lance is desperate and Keith doesn't have any plans or anybody to really go to for Christmas break, so... 
he agrees. So they head to Arizona, where Lance's family resides on their own plot of land with their own business. And from there, we follow the two as Keith gets acquainted with Lance's parents and siblings and gets to know Lance's Mexican-American roots. And meanwhile, Lance is still struggling with his family's varying levels of acceptance of his sexuality. The boys get to know each other better, learn more about one another, and slowly over the span of 10 days, start to fall for each other. Wow shocking I know. Tropes present in this fic include rivals to friends to lovers, fake dating, mutual pining, angst, and of course slow burn. The story ran until it was completed on October 24th, 2016 at 85,042 words. It was known for its consistent regularly scheduled chapter updates until the author just pushed out the last few chapters as a giant one-shot for reasons we'll dive into later. Since this fanfic was released very early in the fan community, it essentially set up a lot of the fanon for Clance's relationship within the fan base. It was the source of a lot of headcanons, influenced how fans saw Lance and Keith and their backgrounds. At the time it was published, we didn't have any info on Lance's family. We didn't meet them until season seven, eight? Many other fan creators saw the Dirty Laundry version of Lance's family as canon and would use them in their own fix and fan art and works or be heavily inspired by them. Sanchez was the main headcanon for Lance's last name for a while, as well as the headcanon that he was Mexican by a good chunk of the fandom before he was confirmed to be Cuban by the crew. But between July 11th and October 24th, the fanfic gained a lot of traction in the Voltron fandom. Like people who didn't even ship clans or know what Voltron was for that matter were jumping on this fic because of how many fans were raving about it. People were even printing out the fic to make physical copies. And the Dirty Laundry fan pile only got bigger as the fandom really blew up in the six and a half months between the second and third seasons. It was even referred to as the Clance Bible as a testament for its power in the Clance corner of the fandom. Well, I say corner. It was more like Clance corridor? Mansion? Clance was huge in the Voltron fandom. Why was Dirty Laundry so popular? Why not any other Clance fic? If I had to hazard a guess, there are a few factors at play. Relatability definitely played a big part of it. The Voltron fandom was made up of all sorts of different age groups, but for Dirty Laundry, a lot of the fans were adolescents and they could see themselves in a lot of the topics that were touched upon in the fic. For instance, sexuality, adulthood, growing into it, learning from mistakes, culture, family, the good and the bad, lack of family, cancer, autism. Whether it was from fans who saw themselves in Lance or Keith, seeing their relationship unfold in the story and wanting to have someone to open up to and bond with, despite maybe not clicking right away. Those who were or are struggling with trying to balance their culture and wanting to please their parents with being true to themselves, dealing with homophobia, biophobia from loved ones. Langst was a big draw of this fic as well. Langst was the fascinating occurrence of turning Lance into the most angst-riddled, punching bag character in the show. Not to be confused with angsty, which is Keith's whole domain. More so, Voltron fans would be piling every depressing, jealousy, and insecurity-related headcanon onto Lance, making him the ultimate relatable character for those just going through it. For what it was, this fic was hitting very deep with the Young people. Not just young people, obviously, but a lot of young people in the fandom were gravitating towards this fic because of the relatability present. Besides that, many fans really enjoyed the witty sense of humor, the simple and to the point writing style. It was easy to understand and follow along, and it essentially took place in our reality, which again, contributed to the whole relatability factor and made it feel much more real. Big fans of Dirty Laundry liked the fact that it was cheesy, but in an endearing way, like you were groaning as you were smiling. For its accolades, it took the title for the second most kudos fanfic on AO3 in March 2017, only after the I Am Groot fanfic, which rest assured it's getting its own video soon, don't worry. But even though it was the second most kudos fanfic overall on AO3 in March 2017, it had the highest number of kudos for any M slash M pairing at that time as well. The fact that this young fic for this young fandom for this new show reached that level of fame while going against pairings like Destiel 
is pretty wild. Further proof of its popularity came from all the fan content this fic inspired. Fan content for a piece of fan content. That's the power of fandom, baby. There were plenty of Dirty Laundry cosplays, a whole gallery's worth of fan art, animatics on YouTube, playlists, most of which included Gasolina, a song that featured prominently in the story. It was a lot. Now, even though my channel is focused on fan culture and fan content, I don't like voicing my personal opinions and takes on specific fanfics more than I have to. Because as tentative as I am to admit it, I do have a decently sized audience. And I don't really want to influence a bunch of people's views on a work that was made entirely for free, for fun, by an author who has nothing to gain other than their own enjoyment for creating something for a piece of media they like. It's not like critiquing and reviewing shows, movies, and books which are made widely available to the public, heavily marketed for profit. Fanfics kind of exist in their own little bubble online unless they somehow breach that bubble and gain fame for whatever reason, like My Immortal or Heat Waves, which I did make videos about because of the fact they're so intensely well known at this point. But yeah, Dirty Laundry was really heckin' big at its height and I read it when I was like 20 and I did reread chunks of it for this video. So I'll go ahead and offer my brief input from what I remember of it, which is... It was fine. It had some nice cute moments, good situational humor. The writing style wasn't personally my cup of tea and it wasn't mind blowing by any means, but it wasn't trying to be either. This was just a fake dating college AU fanfic for Volshawn. To me, it also didn't feel like Lance and Keith were really Lance and Keith, more so they were just OCs in the bodies of Lance and Keith. I wasn't really down with the characterizations, but I didn't hate it. The author was 17 when they wrote it. For me, Dirty Laundry was simply a fanfic that existed. But wait, it officially doesn't exist anymore though, does it? What happened? Okay, this is where it gets messy. Before the more heated discussion started popping up, there was a fair amount of frustration already present in the fandom at the fact that due to the fanfic's popularity, fans would be referencing the fic non-stop. So people were getting exposed to it constantly, all the time, and started getting annoyed. For example, if a completely separate fanfic was talking about Lance visiting his abuelita, a huge chunk of the comment section would just be spamming, abuelita is coming, which is a meme that came from Dirty Laundry. Stuff like that may seem small, but when it's happening nonstop in a fairly sizable fandom, you can see how it could get old and people could get tired of it. Both the Clance and Voltron tags were overrun on social media with Dirty Laundry content, to the point that the author begged readers to tag properly to spare non-readers. As an old clan shipper myself, I'd say at least a good 30% of the clan's fan art being produced at any given moment during Voltron's height was dirty laundry related, at least. But then the controversies come in. Keep in mind that the author was only 17 when they wrote Dirty Laundry. As the fanfic was getting updated, there were several fans that began getting very vocal. They were upset at the author who was white's use of Latino and Mexican stereotypes. La chancla, gasolina, Lina, Lance's username being President Takito. Others called it tone deaf or ill-informed at the very least or racist at worst. The author issued a public apology saying that they completely agreed and were naive when writing the fanfic, apologizing for being insensitive and saying they'd face the consequences. They'd go back and remove or edit any harmful parts of the story as well as seek out someone who was well-versed in Mexican culture to be a sensitivity reader before further chapters were published. There was a mixed reaction to this news. Some were surprised at the fact that the fic was seen as controversial in the first place and offered their support to the author. Others appreciated the apology and acknowledged the author educating themselves, affirming how they still enjoyed the story. And an angry crowd refused to relent, expressing that it wasn't Latino people's job to handhold the author through their mistakes and wanted the fanfic to be deleted since editing the story wasn't enough to fix this whole debacle. Then the debates got even messier when the question of whether the people who were angry at the author were even Latino or Mexican at all, if they were merely masquerading and using that as a shield to bash on an author of a fanfic they simply didn't like. Which... Uh, white people LARPing as POC to win internet arguments. Doesn't that just boost your faith in humanity? In addition to the racial stereotype controversy, there was also dispute over an OC the author included later on in the story, Lance's niece who was on the autism spectrum. The author modeled this character after their own family members with autism, as well as consulted a close friend whose brother was autistic. But some readers were angry at this portrayal of autism, which sparked further debate 
fight over proper representation for autism, how autism is a spectrum, and one person's autism will be different from another's. Several readers who were on the autism spectrum themselves loved the character and vouched for the author's portrayal. Some did find an issue with the character but stressed that autism is indeed a spectrum and kids like the character do exist, and some remained angry, saying that the author shouldn't be writing about it, period. If anything, though, a lot of anger was directed at the people continuously calling out the author, asserting that harassing a kid who meant no harm to the point where their mental health was taking a turn for the worst was disgusting behavior, especially since the author made a genuine apology and many Hispanic and Latino fans' voices were being silenced in favor of mass bandwagon bullying. That was why the last few chapters of the fic were all updated in one giant one-shot, because the author didn't want to keep updating and having people berate them with each new update. On August 15th, 2018, Dirty Laundry became Dirty Lawn B. The author stated that while the fanfic started out as a fun writing project for them, the fandom unfortunately turned it toxic. While they eventually regained their love of Voltron, they wanted to be free of Dirty Laundry, which was holding them back. However, due to a glitch with AO3, the fanfic was unable to be deleted. So the author took matters into their own hands and replaced the story with the B-movie script. The entire B-movie script. What a power move, honestly. And then then the fanfic was deleted once the glitch was fixed. The reaction to Dirty Laundry being taken down was... As if millions of voices suddenly cried out in terror and were suddenly silenced. Even though fans of Dirty Laundry were disappointed, however, they were still largely sympathetic and wished the author the best. Many expressed how they were ashamed at the Voltron fandom's behavior as a whole for letting the situation get so far out of hand. Fans of the work still look back fondly upon it. It's an indication of just how popular Clance was between 2016 to 2018. Its status as THE Clance fic remains, and it's still hailed as one of the most popular fanfics to come out of AO3. And that was a dive into the Voltron fanfic Dirty Laundry. I hope you enjoyed and learned something new. This was definitely a throwback video for me. Did you read Dirty Laundry or were you at least familiar with it? Tell me your thoughts in the comments. And if there are any other famous or infamous fanfics you'd like a video about, then let me know. I have a whole list that's slowly growing, but feel free to cast your votes. Thank you again so much for watching. I really appreciate it and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!